Hello, tea timers. So today I am drinking the Government Street Blend because um, that was one of the new to me teas because it's so delicious. But today, because it's not my first time, I have a little bit of cream. And it's really, really tasty. Uh, um, this one has, it's a black and green tea. It's rich Ceylon and Darjeeling teas blended with jasmine and bergamot for a touch of sweetness. You also could add sugar for a touch of sweetness, which I used to do, but now I'm trying to, I was gonna say I'm trying to cut back my sugar. I'm trying to cut back my sugar, but how I'm trying to cut it back is I'm just choosing where I put it. So I'd much rather have, you know, like um, a donut or, <laughs> or candy. So I'm trying to um, not have it where I don't need to just put it in every cup, which I always used to put like a half a teaspoon of sugar in my tea, but now, now I'm being grown up about it. Speaking of, it looks so good. Speaking of grown up, I think it's one of my new favorites, the government. Speaking of grown up, what I'm going to try to do is because I'm getting so behind on the questions. So if I said, oh, that's a good question, I'm going to write it down. I, I really did put it down. It's just, um, there's just so many more come in every week. So don't feel bad. And, and I'm sorry if you've had questions that I'm like, oh, I'll answer that on the thing and I haven't gotten around to it, but I'm going to try to answer a whole bunch. So if people want cozy stories and stuff, um, then just don't watch this one because I'm just going to try to answer a bunch of questions. Oh, this might not work, but I'll, I'm going to try to knock a bunch of them off. Okay. Jake Smith. When you hear the name Rob Lowe, do you want to scream? Or do you want to be on his new podcast? <laughs> it's called Literally with Rob Lowe. It would be so cool to listen to you too. I don't, I don't really feel one way or the other. He's uh, certainly a nice enough person. Um, he was very young. So I, I guess there's sometimes you might have a curiosity like, oh, I wonder what happened with their life. But I, I know he continued doing work and stuff like that. And I, I think he's married with kids now and all grown. So you wonder like, you know, some people, they grow up and they, they, um, and then, and then some people, uh, keep trying to stay at the same place. And I, I don't know which, where, where he would fall in that, but I, I don't feel like screaming or like, oh goodness, you know, ah, let me get in touch with him. <laughs> so I don't know if that answers the question. All right. Um, <clears throat> 11 Stana Rose. That's exciting about Murchies. I've been trying to have the same tea as you ever since Christmas when I got their large sampler box. Aw, <laughs> that's so sweet. Uh, my favorite so far is the library blend. It's just so floral with the jasmine, just lovely. I forgot about library blend until I read your comment. Library blend's one of my favorites as well. I had a box of library blend right at the beginning of the pandemic and I used it up. Like I had a big box of it. Um, and I used it up and I forgot when I was doing a reorder because then I found out that you can um, do it. When first one, my husband and I raced in and we got some teas and then it's like, oh, now there's more people infected even though we had our mask and everything. So then, then I found you can order it online. So, um, but I forgot Library Blend. So I'm gonna have to order some now because it's one of my favorites as well. You're right, it is really, really lovely. I, it's, it's one of my favorites. I, uh, <laughs> Made me miss it, but I'm really happy with what I have here too. Okay, um, Cat Lucky Nine. Just read an article from 2011 about you and Colin when you were in Canada together. Meg, why didn't you and the kids go with him to England and live a quiet life in the English countryside while he pursued his acting career? The article said you were the love of his life and he of yours. Just curious. Okay, so I would so have gone to England I, I loved England. I have many friends there, um, unfortunately, and it would have been easier for Colin because at the time that we met, my career was like up there and his was ascending, but I had never, I hadn't grown up being like, I want to be an actress. So it, it as you I could tell, I, I, I stopped after a while. So it was, um, I would have so done that, but unfortunately, uh, I had just gotten out of my first marriage and I didn't realize that I had a say in things. So instead of going to the mediator, perhaps I should have got a lawyer because the mediator, we went to the mediator and my ex said all the things that he it wanted. And I thought, well, if, if I have to agree to these in order to be free, I'll agree to them. And one of the things was is that I could only live in 
um, Ojai, Los Angeles, and BC. And because those were three places he liked to live so that we could, you know, both co-parent the kids. And I couldn't, um, Colin didn't like LA because LA is very different from England. And in, in LA, like I was really famous. So we would go, I remember once we went out to dinner and, and uh, there's this uh, well-known actor who apparently has a very large appendage and is known to be a kind of a swords person who came up to our table. We were out for a romantic dinner and he just stepped right in front of Colin and hit on me and then uh, gave me his phone number in case I changed my mind. Like, like Colin wasn't even there. It was really challenging for him. And you know, I just, I, of course I, I wouldn't want to date this person. I'm, I'm with Colin, I'm very happy, but it was really challenging because at that point I was um, doing really, really well in my career. So couldn't, LA didn't work. Uh, and I couldn't afford Ojai because it was quite expensive and this was right after I'd paid off the debts. Um, so I didn't have that much money. So I was, uh, so I thought, okay, well, BC, which I love BC anyway, but that was difficult for both of us to keep our careers going to be in BC. I would have so loved to have gone to England. And I think maybe the whole, um, maybe everything would have turned out differently. Uh, he had, has a, a lovely extended family there who, who I love and who I still love. Um, but, uh, it is what it is. And the blessing is, is that if it had, if it had turned out and I had been able to go to England, uh, my life would be very different now. And I don't, I don't wish away the events of my life that happened since, you know, I'm so blessed with Dawn. We, we just celebrated our, our 20 years of meeting and, um, He's like the best partner you could ever have. So I'm very blessed and I get the best of both worlds because Colin and I are still friends and he was able to continue his career in a phenomenal way. And so, um, you know, so we have we, many blessings on both sides, but yes, I absolutely would have gone there. I absolutely would. One of my best friends, Diana lives there and, uh, and Colin's there and, and I love the sense of humor that many people have, not all, but many people. Okay, um, uh, Brycat61, hi Meg, you mentioned a bit about your Psycho 2 experience, but you don't, uh, if you don't mind, could you speak on how it was working with Vera Miles? Thanks. I think I might've mentioned this before. I don't remember much about Vera. Um, she came in, She. I watched the film Psycho. I had to watch it because I got Psycho 2, so I had to watch the first one and it was scary. I was like, holy smokes. And, and I thought Tony was a really good actor and he was. Um, I, and, and, and so Vera came in and she was my mother. She was very professional. She had all her lines. She went straight to work. No nonsense. Um, she, she seemed nice. We didn't really hang out. We just shot our scenes and then that was it. So that's all I remember about her. So that's why I don't talk much about her because I don't remember much about her. Um, Chris, F Chris Fruz Fruzzo, uh, do you like action movies and do you like drinking coffee? <laughs> I, I, okay. When I was younger, before I had kids, I could watch action movies, no problem. And then I could watch them a bit because I had to for work. But when I finished acting, uh, back when I was in my uh, early thirties, mid thirties, when I stopped acting, I stopped watching movies. And I found that as I, as time went by, the action movies started getting more intense and the action started getting more intense and they started getting more violent. And I don't know, I don't like paying money to get scared. Although I, I do have scary things in my books. Like my books can't do have some scary stuff in them, but, but it's balanced with like more uplifting things. But yeah, you know, I, I used to, but coffee and coffee, no, coffee makes me very jittery. I can't drink coffee at all. Like it really affects me where I'll, I'll not sleep for 24 hours. If I have one cup of coffee, it just messes with me, which is weird because I can eat chocolate. <laughs> no problem. Drink tea. No problem. But coffee can't do. All right. Oh, we've got plenty of time for more questions. Okay. I've answered all of these. Here we go. Okay. What's here? Um, okay. Uh, Roy, hey Meg, sorry to bombard your comment section. Hey, you are it's fine. You can bombard my comment section. And I, I, I'm very happy because if I didn't have these questions then I wouldn't have a tea time because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. I just sit and say, hi, I'm drinking tea. 
okay, that's all, bye. <laughs> Uh, so no worries about that at all. Um, but a question came to me. Do you find yourself sometimes hating a character, their actions, behavior, etc., when it was you, the author, who made them that way? I guess it's a bit of a Dr. Frankenstein. That is so true. Like when I have the bad guy, like when you, when the bad guy, <laughs> when I sound, it's like that song, bad guy, you know, the, that singer with the, different oh she just dyed her hair blonde but that bad guy song but when i have the bad guy which is what i call all the people who've been bad guys in my life but when i have them it's a mix like when i'm writing it i slip into them and their mindset and uh it's funny because in the uh, in cliff's edge the the no oh no not cliff's edge in um what was it hidden cove the painter I had to cut several of the scenes because they were too scary. <laughs> they were like, they were too scary for uh, my particular audience. And I was like, oh, but I think those are some of the best written scenes because I, when you slip into his mind, you know, the, they start talking to you and they, they just, it's like, wow, you know, and it's, it's fun to go in their mind, but it's also fun because, uh, I've trained myself to be able to go in all the different characters' minds, but then they get their comeuppance. I'm a bloodthirsty creature, I have to admit. I didn't, I didn't know I was, but I think it's because the people in my life and in my childhood who, who you know, did the things they did that were very harmful, I had kept telling myself, but when they die, when they die, or you know, sometime in their life, they're gonna look in the mirror and say, I was a horrible person. I was a terrible person and now I'm suffering in the fiery pits of hell for what I did. But they didn't. They just died. They just they just had peaceful deaths and it made me so mad. So in these books now, I can have them have terrible deaths. <laughs> Not terrible, terrible, but like they get their comeuppance. The bad guys always get their comeuppance. It, it's such a relief for me. And I think that's why I like writing these books so much is because they don't go scot-free and then go have a merry life off on their own. They 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 get their comeuppance, but they are, they can be very scary. Did I answer? I don't know what, I, I think I might have. Um, so yes, it's like a Dr. Frankenstein thing. While you're doing it, you know, you're like, it's, it's exciting when you feel their voice, when you feel their thoughts, when you feel their like, when they tell you what they're going to do next, how they're going to close the net around the person they're stalking or, you know, what their plans are. It's exciting when it feels real, but it's also like, there's an excitement because like, I'm going to get you, you effer. <laughs> you can figure out what the F is. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Jubal jumping Josephats. What a tour de force reading. Well done, Meg. Thank you. Poor Maggie. She's been through so much, but it sounds like she knows what to want, what she wants and how to get it. I'm really glad you're enjoying the readings. Um, I'm really glad. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Um, Oh, and then Patricia Gallant, Meg, the actor, coming out in spades. Bravo. Oh, there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of these I pinned down. I guess to tell myself, yeah, it's okay to do the story time. Um, Brazen Spiritually. Wow, I'm glad I got to see you in action. Applause. And then Judy C. I'm really happy you started story time. And Astro Blue, which is Andrew. Your voice is truly calming, Meg. Thanks for reading to us this weekend. Oh, well, there's more story times. I didn't know. Sorry. I put these down a while ago and I didn't know. Let's see, Sean, a great story time. You put so much passion and emotion into their readings. I ordered my copy of Solace Island from Indigo for curbside pickup tomorrow. Are Hidden Cove and Cliff's Edge part of a trilogy with Solace or are they separate stories? Okay, they are, it's, it's, it's like a set of three, but you have different, um, different antagonists in each one. So you can read each one as standalone, but you might see some of the characters. Well, you will see some of the characters from Solace Island, book one, in book two, because uh, Solace Island, you have Maggie, and in book two, you see Eve as, as her sister, but in book two, then it's Eve's turn for her happy ever after, and you also have the actor, and then you also have the creepy, creepy, creepy obsessed stalker. And then in, um, in the third book, in Hidden Cove, then you see Zelia, who's in book one, and she just shows up a little bit at the farmer's market, but she likes Luke, who, 
who Maggie ends up with, but I wanted to give her her own happy ever after. And there you have, oh, it's like you, you have a, a very, um, a, well, creepy again, <laughs> a painter who, um, who has uses unusual things to paint with uh, his, from his victims. So yeah, so they're all, they're all, they're all different. You can read them separate or together. And actually with the runaway heiress, she's the, um, she's the assistant. So she's Zelia in the Hidden Cove, her assistant, but it's not on Solace Island. But you, but so that's a continuing person with a different name because she's, she's on the run because she's the runaway heiress. Okay, let's see, is there another one? Oh, Okay. Oh, and then it's Sean again. Another fine story time, Meg. Just got my copy today. Gonna make my tea. Start reading shortly. Listening to the way you read the chapters makes me envy people who lived many decades ago and gathered around the radio to listen to radio serials being read and being captivated by the simple pleasure of that. Ah, that's exactly kind of what I wanted it to have the feeling of. That's exactly kind of that's a very bad sentence. I'm, you can't tell I'm a wordsmith with that kind of talking. But that's what I wanted the feel of, this, the warm comfort of somebody else's voice, just talking. And that's why I decided to drop all three of the Runaway Heirs together so that it's on a like loop thing. So if you go, you can do where it automatically plays the next and the next as a way to just, like, if I like to, you know, listen to as you fall asleep is just that sound like when you're upstairs and you can hear the parent the parents murmuring downstairs you know the voices drifting up and you can't hear what they're saying I mean except for when they're having fights but this is not fights well although sometimes my characters do but that kind of comfort as a small child of people are awake downstairs and drifting off to sleep I thought that it might be nice I think I think that's you know that's uh that's the feeling I wanted you guys to have Okay, there have I done, I've done most of these. Um, mm -mm, I did these ones, all of these. Is there more over here? Yeah. Oh yes, there's a whole bunch more over here. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Teresa Jones, as a reader, I love the story. As a writer, I've decided I need to read my story out loud like this while doing final edits. Learn so much from these story time videos. I'm so glad. And yes, it's really good to read your stuff out loud. I didn't realize I do, but um, when I had to do a writing retreat and we were supposed to be in silence and I kept hearing a voice and it was me, then I realized, oh, I do. Because words have a rhythm and you want to... You, it, you want it to look right on the page, but you also want it to feel right on the tongue. So I'm really glad it helped and good luck with your writing. Oh, wow, it's late, it's 18 minutes, bye.